Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Mr. A's Math Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at constructing line segments into specific ratios. So what I mean is if I have a line segment like AB and I want to divide it into a ratio of 2 to 7, that means I need to find the point on this segment that splits it so that this part of the segment to this part of the segment is in the ratio 2 to 7. Now this is a pretty clever construction because what we're going to do is essentially create a set of similar triangles and take advantage of the properties of similar triangles. So we're going to begin this construction by choosing one side or the other of the segment. It doesn't matter which. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to go for point A here. And right off of A, I'm just going to draw a line up into space. Now, this is a little bit unusual because typically we don't just draw a line without having a specific length in mind. But here, you'll see what's going to happen in a moment. I'm going to need the length here because I'm not sure exactly how much I need yet. See, if I want to split AB into the ratio 2 to 7, what I really need to do is create nine congruent pieces on this segment. I take the first two, and then I split it in the last seven, and that's a ratio of two to seven. But I don't know exactly how much to open my compass so that I'll split AB into nine perfect pieces. Now, of course, I could use trial and error, but that wouldn't be a construction. So what I want to do is create this line long enough that I can split it into nine congruent segments. And once we've done that, we'll be able to use similar triangles to transfer that ratio over to the original segment we started with. So with this segment, you want to kind of eyeball it. Nine is a lot of pieces, so I don't want to set my compass open too far. This is about as small as you're ever going to use your compass with this kind of construction. And I'm going to come over here and make nine separate pieces. So with the compass point on A, I'm going to make a mark right there. And then I'm just going to continue along without changing the length of my compass. That's three. That's four. That's five. Six. Seven. Eight and 9. Now, I like to number these. It's not important for the construction, but it helps to kind of organize your thoughts. And it also gives us a way to identify the points so we can talk about them. So I'm going to go ahead and number those 1 through 9. And notice that this line continues past here. That's fine. I don't have to worry about this line being too long. I'm only interested in the part that's divided into 9 segments. Now, if you think about what we've just done, it's pretty clever. I didn't know how long to open my compass to divide this line segment into 9 equal parts. So I just create a new line and divide it into nine equal parts of a random length, right? I didn't pick this length for any particular reason other than that nine of them would fit here. So now if I connect this ninth tick mark with point B, what I'm going to get is a triangle. And this is the beginning of how this construction works. By creating this triangle, if I were to say focus on, for the ratio two to seven, point two down here. All right, so let me go ahead and star that one. Clearly, if I look at the part of this segment in between A and 2, compared with the part of the segment between 2 and 9, you would agree that that is a ratio of 2 to 7, because I have two of these little pieces here and seven of them over here. So all we need to do is transfer that ratio over to this line segment AB, and, and we'll have the thing that we need. The reason I just stammered there for a second is I noticed that this construction is going to go off the page. So what I'm going to do is instead of 2 to 7, I'm going to go with a ratio of 7 to 2 this should stay on the page. That means I'm going to go up to 7 here, and I'll divide it right there. So I'll have a 7 to 2 ratio. So let's forget about this point right here. Now, you could argue that those are the same, and they are if, it, if direction isn't specified. But for this construction, I can see what's going to happen. And down here, I would have ended up off of where you can see on my page, but you can't see it. So what we're going to use is the fact that in similar triangles, if I have a line parallel to one side of the triangle, right? well, in any triangle, if I have a line parallel to the side, then that divides the original triangle into two similar triangles. Here it would be this small one on top and the original triangle AB to point 9. Now, anywhere I place this segment, as long as it's parallel to this side, it's going to divide these two segments in the same ratio as these two segments, which means if I create my parallel line right to point 7, then this 7 to 2 ratio is going to be transferred to my original segment AB, and I'll get a 7 to 2 ratio right there. So that's exactly what we're going to do. To construct a parallel line, the easiest way is to make a parallelogram. All we need to do is copy this length down to here. That'll make our top and bottom match. And this length over to here. That'll make our left and right side match. You may recall that a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides congruent is a parallelogram. And that's all we need to do to make this construction work. So I'm going to set my compass up on point B and point 9. And I'm going to measure this distance out. That's like, for me, the top of my parallelogram. And I want to bring that same distance down here to 0.7 for the bottom of my parallelogram. So I'm just going to make an arc there. Right? 
Somewhere along that arc is going to be the point that I need to make this line parallel. To find out where on the arc, I simply need to take a second measurement. So I'm going to go from 7 to 9. Right? So setting my compass up there, that's the left side of my parallelogram, and I want to bring it down to the right-hand side. I need to put the compass on point B, and then without changing the distance, I'm just going to make an arc right there. Where those two intersect is going to create a line parallel to line between 9 and B. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that line in, and what this is going to accomplish is transferring that ratio. So I'll place this dotted as well. So you can see those lines are nice and parallel from the parallelogram construction, which means that this piece here to this piece is the same ratio as this piece to this piece, which means I have a 7x, 2x length here. I'm calling it x because I don't know how long that is. I haven't measured anything, but I know that whatever this piece is, its length is in the ratio 7 to 2 with this piece by virtue of this construction. So that's how it goes. I'm going to do one more over here just to show you another example oriented slightly differently. This is line CD. It's kind of going down to the right. And we're going to start the same way. I'll go a little bit quicker on this one. If you get lost, just go back to the first explanation. We're going to start by making a line just randomly off in some direction. And I think about a 45 degree angle tends to work pretty well for me. Since I need a 3 to 5 ratio this time, I need to split it up into 8 pieces. So I can take 3 of them and then 5 of them. So I'm going to set my compass up to some pretty small amount, and I'm going to go ahead and mark out eight pieces on this line segment. So there's one piece, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first few times you do this, if you find that you run out of room, just extend this line. As long as you have paper, you can go ahead and extend it, and it'll work out just fine. I'll go ahead and number those the same as I did last time, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I think what I'm going to do is exactly the same thing I did on the last one. I'm seeing that if I want to go in a ratio of three to five, grabbing three there and then five here, I might run off the page on this side. So instead, I'm going to do a ratio of five to three. I'll just reverse the order here, which means I want to head to this fifth point because that point already divides this piece from C to eight into the ratio of five to three. I'm going to create my triangle by connecting point D to point 8. And then if I construct a line parallel to that one through the number 5 point, that's going to show me where the ratio is on the original segment. So for that construction, again, it's a parallelogram. I need to take the left-hand side right here between 8 and 5, and I'm going to copy this thing, length over to the right-hand side of my parallelogram. So that's left and right. Now I'm going to take the distance from 8 to D. This would be the top and bottom of my parallelogram, at least as I see it. And I want to copy that right up here to 5. Where those intersect is going to locate my parallel line. So I'll go ahead and set that up and add that in here. So we connect that to point 5. Okay. And the important part of that line is right there, where it intersects the original CD segment because these pieces are now in the ratio of 5x to 3x because on the left hand side of the triangle I've got five congruent pieces here three congruent pieces here so that's my 5 to 3 ratio this parallel line transfers that ratio over to that side now a quick word about areas because it's important if I were to look at the length say um, oh sorry I'm thinking of the next thing I'm going to do so that's all you have to do to divide segments into ratios 2 to 7, 5 to 3. You could really, of course, construct any two ratios that you want. And it's worth noting, it'll come up in a later video, that not only have I constructed the ratio 5 to 3 in this segment, but I've also really constructed the number 5 eighths. Because if you think about the CD as being a unit segment, 1, well, the whole thing is 8x, and that piece is 5x, which means I've got a 5x over 8x, in other words, this segment here is exactly 5 eighths of the original segment. And this segment is exactly 3 eighths of the original segment. That's going to come in handy when we start looking at dilations beyond just integers or quarters and halves. So you'll see that in another video. If you have any questions, shoot me an email or leave a comment. And of course, remember to please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions.